Neelay sir, we are live now. Hmm. Please record also. Yeah. The recording also started. Mandir ma'am. Mandir ma'am. Yes, I'm just about to start. Dignitaries, distinguished guests, my esteemed colleagues, good evening and a very warm welcome to the first Sri Nanubhai Amin Memorial Lecture on the occasion of the 101st birth anniversary of visionary scientist and industrialist, Dr. Nanubhai Amin. I request Sri Rahul Amin, President, Navrachna University, to say a few words remembering the great visionary on his birth anniversary, sir. Good evening to all. My father, Nanubhai Amin, was a multi-talented and innovative person. Nanubhai graduated in electrical engineering from Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1942. In fact, he was only 17 years old when my grandfather, Bailalbhai Amin, decided to send him to MIT for his college education. So as a 17 year old, he went to MIT and that started to shape his wonderful career in engineering and technology. He did his postgraduate studies in electrical engineering at Cornell University in 1943. He returned to India in 1944, the period when freedom struggle in India was at its peak. Science and technology, particularly in industries, were very far from prime attention of the nation. It is in this background that Nanubhai joined Jyoti Limited, already founded by Bailal Bhai Amin as an engineer on 1st January 1944. Nanubhai's chief preoccupation during this period was to translate knowledge of science and technology he had acquired in USA in actual and practical terms at Jyoti Limited. Under his leadership, Jyoti grew into a multi-product, multi-technology, multi-plant organization, developing products which were badly needed by India then. Nanubai himself developed India's first hydraulic pumps, hydroelectric generating sets, switch gear, switchboards, control equipment, and electronic instrumentation. He was very actively involved in the day-to-day -day development and engineering activities. As a young boy, I have myself seen my father working on the drawing board. He was that hands-on. Jyoti Limited established a modern R&D center in 1964. The Jyoti R&D center has been recognized by the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, Government of India, and several institutions and universities of repute to conduct research in programs leading to doctoral degrees. He took keen interest in the field of education, particularly technical education. He was instrumental in formation of Gujarat Energy Development Agency, the first state nodal, nodal agency in India set up for development and propagation of renewable sources of energy, a subject close to his heart. 
and he encouraged and helped my mother to establish the Navarachna institutions. His advice was sought by various government and national bodies in the field of science and technology, <laughs> technical education, etc. During his distinguished career, Nanubai served as a member of the IIT's Review Committee of the Government of India, member Board of Governors IIT Mumbai and IIT Kanpur, member Board of Governors of IIM Ahmedabad, member of the Syndicate and Senate Maharaja Sahajara University of Baroda, <laughs> Chairman National Regional Committee of All India Council for Technical Education, Government of India, etc. <laughs> Nanubai also took keen interest in the social and professional activities that promote, promote health standards, develop scientific outlook, and preserve the environment as well as the activity that improve agricultural productivity. He was chairman of Gujarat State Committee of World Wildlife Fund India, chairman Center for Environment Education, chairman Governing Council Community Science Center Vadodara, president Society of Clean Environment Vadodara, President Citizens Blood Donation Society, Vadodra, amongst others. In the, nine, in the year 1983, Sardal Patel University, Vallabh Vidyanagar, conferred on him honorary doctorate of science degree in recognition of his contribution through science and technology in the technological and economic development of the country, as well as in appreciation of his deep involvement and a very wide range of activities for the social, economic, cultural, welfare, and educational causes. In 1985, he was awarded Vishwa Gurjari Award Ahmedabad for promoting research and development activities, particularly developing appropriate technologies and products, including renewable energy for rural population. Nanubai was a compassionate and kind-hearted person, always ready to help people. He was a firm believer in equal rights for all and particularly gender equality. Today, we are fortunate to have Kartike Bhai with us to deliver the first Nanubai Amin Memorial Lecture. Welcome, Kartike Bhai. Kati Ke Bhai has worked closely with Nanubai at CEE and knew him very well. Nanubai also had a great regard and respect for Kati Ke Bhai. I am sure we are all going to be enlightened by Kati Ke Bhai in today's talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was Sri Rahul Amin, President, Navrachna University. I now request Dr. Nilay Yagnik, Provost, Navrachna University, to say a few words on this occasion, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mandira. Um, I welcome everyone, all of you today, to the very first Nanubai Amin Memorial Lecture organized by the Navrachna University. I'd like to begin by a personal note. 
many years ago in the 70s early 70s i was a small boy and i used to visit varodra to meet my uncle who was a senior a manager senior person in the r&d division of jyoti one day he brought home a device and he told me just watch this small device it was a solar cooker 19 early 70s and in that we actually cooked some food and it was one of the tastiest foods that we had that day tastiest khichdi actually which we had that day a few years later he took me around to the community science center and i saw and he would tell me that this is also founded by shri nanubhai amin another uncle of mine would often tell me about the long walks that he would have with nanubhai on the shores of porbandar where they would think and contemplate this was in the early 80s where they would think about how tidal energy could be used how wind farms could be developed how a renewable national grid could be developed my uncle was working very closely with nanubhai in jeda he was uh, one of the earliest heads of jeda at that time so in all these areas i saw a deep commitment i understood that there was a deep commitment from shri nanubhai amin to the fields of science to the fields of education to the fields of environment and to make in india and it is this ideas of nanubhai this philosophy which we are trying to replicate in navrachna university so the youngsters whom we are building are people who think from a multidisciplinary and an interdisciplinary perspective who are thinking innovatively how do you solve society's problems how do you make things in india to solve the indian situation and the indian problems that exist and this is also reflected in the strategies of our uni university which we have been doing over the last couple of years so whether it's the international collaborations that we are having with some of the leading universities of the world or the collaborations we have the deep level collaborations that we have with various industries which cover various aspects including research or the newly established centers which will be the engines for research in our university in the years to come the centers for uh, education the center for uh, public health the center for heritage the center for professional education and of course the center for environment in fact today's entire program is driven by the navrachna university center for environment research and innovation i'm very happy therefore and i'm so grateful that mr kartike sarabhai has accepted our invitation to speak and to deliver the very first nanubhai amin memorial lecture thank you thank you sir i now request dr vandana talegaukar associate professor from the school of liberal studies and education to introduce shri kartike sarabhai Shri Kartikeya Sarabhai is one of the world's leading environmental educators and a dedicated community builder. He was educated in Cambridge, Tripos in natural science and went on to do postgraduate work in development communication at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Shri Sarabhai is the founder director of the Center for Environment Education. headquartered in ahmedabad with 40 offices across india shri sarabhai's primary focus is on the greening of india's formal education system and initiatives for biodiversity education <clears throat> he is a trustee of the sabarmati ashram <clears throat> preservation and memorial trust Shri Sarabhai is also a member of the many committees set up by the government of India and other organizations. 
He is a recipient of 2016 International Brandwein Medal by Brandwein Institute and the IUCN CEC in recognition of his lifetime work for inspiring new generations to experience, embrace, and love nature firsthand. In 2012, the President of India conferred him with Padma Shri, one of India's highest civilian awards. Sri Sarabhai is the chair of the Earth Charter International Council and the chairholder of the UNESCO Chair on Education for Sustainable Development and the Human Habitat. He is the co-chair of the first priority action area, Advancing Policy of the Global Action Program. As a well-known advocate of education for sustainable development, Sri Sarabhai has actively contributed to the global negotiation processes around the UNDESD and the formulation of sustainable development goals. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vandana. It is with great pride that we present the university anthem on this occasion. The university anthem captures the essence of what Navrachna University stands for. It gives a profound message. Be what you want to be. Highlighting the initiatives and activities designed at Navrachna University for students to realize their potentials. It also highlights the university commitment to academic excellence via innovation, experimentation, and research. A request to all to please rise for the university anthem. विश्वमित्र के तट पे देखो शहर सयाजी नगरी है माँ शारदा का मंदिर है नवरचना यूनिवर्सिटी है बनना है जो बन जाओ तुम बात हमें बदलाती है शिक्षण से ही स्वतंत्रता है पाठ यही पढ़वाती है नव नव रचना करते यहाँ पर छात्र और छात्राएं हैं शिक्षण की खुशबू फैलाती नव निर्मित शाखाएं हैं प्रयोग से प्रेरित शिक्षा पर यहाँ जोर दिया जाता है एन का छात्र दशो दिशा में पर फैलाता है निष्ठा तब और है यहाँ के शिक्षण की पहचाने हैं शिक्षा और संशोधन से जो उन्नत राष्ट्र बनाते हैं नव रचना Sri Nanubhai Amin was a staunch believer in renewable sources of energy, considering depleting conventional sources like coal, oil, etc. Gujarat state was the first state in India to realize the necessity and importance of development and popularization of renewable sources of energy. And Gujarat Energy Development Agency was set up under the chairmanship of Sri Nanubhai Amin. Under his leadership, Jeddah made tremendous progress in developing, harnessing, and popularizing renewable sources of energy. Setting up of a nodal agency for renewable energy sources in Gujarat was considered as a model for other states in India. Today, on the occasion of his 101st birth anniversary, we are indeed honored to have with us Sri Kartikeya Sarabhai, who will speak on leadership in environment and sustainability. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Vandana. Uh, 
Thank you very much, um, Rahul, Tejal Nadita, and family members of Nanubi Amin, Nilay Bai, and all the members of Navarashtra University. I must say, I feel highly privileged to have known and worked very closely with Nanubai in, in so many capacities as I was uh, thinking about this. And it is therefore an honor for me to be uh, here today with you to share some thoughts on the occasion of the first uh, Nanubai Amin Memorial Lecture. It was Nanubai's 101st birth centenary. And it was only then that I really realized that Nanubai, who was such a father figure to me, was indeed the same age as my father, Vikram Sarabai. And their, age, their births were only one and a half months apart. So I, I, was, I was amazed and, and I had that Rahul uh, relationship uh, with him, uh, which, was, which was very unique. Uh, and one is fortunate in one's life when one has that. I first met Nanubai through my association with uh, WWF India. In the late 70s, there was no branch office in Ahmedabad. And I was instrumental in starting what was called the North Gujarat, a branch committee. Nanubi at the time was the chair of the Central Gujarat uh, committee based in, in Vadodara. And these are very early days for conservation in India. And under Nanubi's leadership, we decided that there should be a Gujarat state level WWF. Now, this was not part of WWF's structure at that time at all. They were working independently with different branch offices, but we decided that we must get together and put together uh, not only the central and north Gujarat, but very powerful and very important Savarashtra committees with uh, Darbar Sahib, Shivraj Kumar Khachar, Lav Kumar Bhai, many others. In Baroda itself, in Dubai was a close colleague of his. Uh, and and there, was, there was really this very fantastic group which, which met and we, we, we discussed where we want to take the state level because it was breaking new, new grounds. Sometimes we would be at Piloton Islands, and I remember Nanubai walking through those very muddy waters. I was trying to find a wonderful photograph I remember from that, from that day. Sometimes we would meet at, um, at Hingolgard, at the Hingolgard Fort. Sometimes it would be at Timba, which was uh, this this mine which was converted into a water body by, by in Dubai. Uh, we would meet in, in, in a variety of different, uh, different occasions. And sometimes it would be at Nanubai's farm. And I remember having some absolutely delicious matlan odiu. And uh, in, in that farm while we were discussing, and, and of course, Savita Ben's great hospitality, affection and warmth made a very special relationship. So it was, it was really like a family relationship. It was not only for us, but we were so engrossed in this, this mission that we, we really spent, I don't know, hours and hours discussing it. At that time, the Narmada Dam was a very big issue. And uh, it was a very sensitive issue in Gujarat. And the WWF of India had taken a stand heavily criticizing the dam. Now the Gujarat committee uh, had discussed it and had a different opinion. Uh, we saw the pluses and some of the, uh, some of the drawbacks of that plan, but we did not agree with the national plan. And the question was, what do we, what do, we do? And Nanuva was very clear. He said, look, we must have our stand and, and let us understand that this is a body consisting of voluntarism and trustees and the national trustees are no, it's not sort of they're like above the state trustees or something else, and we must explain. So at that time, it's very really unusual for an organization that the state took its own clear view on this. We also had felt that, that it would be good to have a holistic plan for the state. And he was thinking in larger terms. Uh, the Gujarat Energy Development Organization's mention already has been made. But we had decided to have a perspective plan for Gujarat. And in 81, organized this really wonderful seminar at the Gir National Park, at which the Prime Minister, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, came to inaugurate it. And we had all the sort of senior leaders, forest departments, governments in conservation all come together. 
and, and actually talk about what should be the future of conservation here. Now, we were already talking not only of wildlife, not only of nature, but really integrating it into development plans, what today we easily call sustainable development. But in those days, it was more environment uh, and development. We are working very much with young people, uh, developing leadership skills. That was a time when the Gujarat Nature Conservation Society also came up, and uh, there was another body there. And by 1983, I had proposed the formation of CEE. We had felt the Ministry of Environment was still not formed in Delhi. It was still a department. And they were about to form it, and we had argued that there needs to be a strong educational pillar there. And it would be somewhat of a joint venture between uh, the Nehru Foundation and the Ministry of Environment. And in all such instances, uh, they had that the secretary of the Ministry of Environment would always be the chairperson. This was just standard practice. I argued against this. I said that you, you need a person who is, who is the integrity and, 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 the, and the independence of this. And, and they questioned it and probed it. And then I asked Nanubai, I said, Nanubai, would you take up the first chairmanship of the center and lead it and make a new model out of it? And he said, yes. And the minute I, I managed to, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. The minute we got Nanubai to be nominated as the chair, the ministry, the government, everyone had no problem. They accepted this model, looking at him. They say, we don't have to ask you uh, whether he will keep you under control also, that this will, be a, this will be a truly independent body and he speaks for everyone. And I think that was, that was, that was very good and we were very fortunate to have them. Uh, there were several instances where I, I remember how he took stands. I mean, he was also chair of our building committee and this was money which was coming from the ministry. There was a whole building thing and everything else we were going through. It was very wonderful for those who have visited it, a very wonderful building. It needed a many unusual uh, aspects of it because we were integrating trees and other things into it. But at this point, the, the contractor came back and said, look, there is an escalation. The prices of bricks has gone up because there was a shortage. And he demanded some 16 lakhs more at that time. So Nanubai put it together, calculated it, and came down to saying that, look, 4 lakhs seems to be fair. But once he was clear what was fair, he wanted to go ahead. Now, the ministry representative there would keep on saying that let's, this is a clause in the agreement says arbitration. The clause in the agreement does not give that person a right to ask for this escalation. But Nanubai's sense of fairness and correctness rode above all of these things. He said, I'm passing it. This ministry guy said, look, we are not going to agree. So Nanubi said, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to pass in by majority and we will take your view of, of uh, your dissent. We will note. But it went on. And the building happened in time and everything went, went ahead. I have spoken a little bit earlier about Narmada. Now, we had a book series called Environment and Development. And we had done a book by uh, uh, KJ Joy and Swas Paranchwe from Pune on the Narmada. Now, what they had done was it was a wonderful book because it talked about a different way of approaching the same problem. Instead of storing all the water in the, at, the, at the top point, you stored some of the water at the end points. And you also believed in recharging and everything else. And it was a different approach, an interesting approach. Nanuwe liked it. And Nanuwe said, we must have a talk with the government. So we, he spoke to the government and the government refused to say because they're so sensitive that I will not come. We will not participate in any meeting of an NGO or a non-governmental body or someone else which talks about the Narmada because it's too sensitive. Now, how do you do it? Narmada said, I'm determined to call them to the meeting. So he literally negotiated with them, with the Gujarat government. I remember him on the phone and he said, okay, this methodology which is being talked about is not only relevant for Narmada, it is true for all dams. So we will promise not to use the word Narmada in the entire meeting, and you promise to come. Now, with that type of compromise, the Gujarat government participated. We discussed all the points, but the N word was not used. The Narmada word was not used, and yet we had a very fruitful discussion. Now, finding a solution like that of involving government is, is not, not easy. 
Another important case at that time was there was a Narayan Sarovar sanctuary on, on, on in Kutch. It had been notified in uh, 1981. It's a desert sanctuary with, with uh, what should I say, with, it is a habitat which is unique. There are no other places like that. However, it also has rich in lignite, limestone, bentonite, and bauxite under the sanctuary. Now, Gujarat government said, look, how can we keep it as a sanctuary? We have to exploit this. It was certainly under threat. And in, in July 1993, the Gujarat government decided that the sanctuary, which was 766 square kilometers, would now become 95 square kilometers. They denotified it. And in 16 different packets, it would have completely destroyed that sanctuary. Uh, Dr. Preeti Nambiar had just joined CE and she ran a virtual campaign in Times of India on this issue. Ranubai very much supporting her and looking at what, what was being done. And the matter went to the Supreme Court. And, and the Gujarat government, they didn't like what the intervention was because in those days, environmentalists were not called environmentalists. They were always referred to as so-called environmentalists. The word so-called was almost always joined because they, they were, the credibility was low, except for Nanuwe. Nanuwe's own credibility was very high. And as a result of that, then I remember several discussions which Nanuwe had with, with different stakeholders, with the company, with others. And finally, we got a sanctuary of 444 square kilometers. Not, not as good as the 760, because we had to give some for the lignite and other mining, but not as bad as a 90 kilometer six fragmented sanctuary. And a whole sanctuary came up. Now, now these are just a few instances of how, how the clarity of thought, of how environment and development needs to be thought together, really becomes, becomes so important. And CE also helped me very much with, with management issues. I mean, he, he himself, as Rahul was saying, I mean, his own experience in Jyoti, I'm sure, with labor and everything else, we had a labor problem. One, one day when he was coming, all some of our staff members lay in front of his car and wouldn't let him go. So Nanubhai said, and he took, took them all there in Gujarati. He spoke to them. We, we, we spent an hour. He said, doesn't matter, Kathy, you speak this. And the whole problem became one of dialogue, and we could really deal with it. I remember another time when uh, we had a very senior person, senior administrative person, who we thought was, was really not helpful to the organization and was, in fact, doing some things which were possibly injurious. So Nanuwe says, Kartike, you are going to go in and, and terminate the service. So Mekiduka Nanuwe, okay, I will do it in the next few days. He said, not at all. You go fire him and come back and tell me that you've done it, and only then I will leave. So, so I, it's not so much in my character to do that, but I went there, I followed his instructions, did that, and I came back, and we were so much the better for it. So it was, it was a, a variety of instances that I could go on and on like this about so many other things, both, both in terms of the technical issues, management issues, dealing with government, how you, how you, how you do it, and, and others. And he's laid really well the foundation of what became the center, what has become the Center for Environment Education. His uh, help with me was not only confined to the environment field, I should also add, in 1995, my uncle Gautam Bey passed away, and I was suddenly made chairman of Ambalal Saraba Enterprises. And uh, here I was in a, in a, in a, in a corporate uh, environment, and it was Sarabhais were going through a very difficult period at that time. And I went to Nanube, and I said, I do want someone who can be a really true, independent, strong director who understands issues and can say it exactly like it is. He says what he wants, and he says it. And I think he, he joined us. And in both those capacities, in the capacity of uh, CE head, the chairman of CE, and in ASC, and in various other capacities, he, till the last day, he, he, has, he has served service. So, so let me again say that it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's truly been an honor for me to be able to share a few words about Nanubai. Now, what I was talking about today is really the same subject which we learned from Nanubai and inspiration from him, 
which is really to do with leadership. That in this field of environment and sustainability, one part is the science of and, and the science is something which we all need to understand. There is a lot of very good science today on, uh, on climate change, for instance. One of the big problems of the world, uh, one of the, the major problems is perhaps climate change, just as biodiversity is, and the two get very linked. And there is IPCC, they come out with reports. But if you see several leaders around the world, including, unfortunately, the US, there's just not an acceptance of the science and, and how you convert science into, into policy. And that bridge is very important. Rahul did say about how Nanuway coming back from MIT uh, takes science and takes it into industry, takes it into his into whatever he does. Because he, in many ways, like my father, saw science as a way of solving development problems, not as something separate uh, from these. So science was for, for, for human development, was for, in this case, say agriculture, was for supplying water, for something else. And how do you make it really more user-friendly? How do you make it more efficient? And this is the type of leadership we want. So when we were doing environmental education uh, uh, in, in Hyderabad, I remember, uh, and at that time, uh, young girls, 10-year-olds, they said that, they told CE that you talk so much about the footprint. The footprint, as many of you know, is the way we tread on the planet. When we, when we consume something or when we spend resources, we have a footprint. And the footprint has become very large. In developed countries, it's huge. It's about eight hectares per person, much more than anything can be afforded. But they came out with a symbol of the handprint. And we asked them, what is this hand, what does the handprint mean? They said the handprint means what you can do, how you can convert your education into positive action. And that gave us the type of strength and idea which we took in 2007. Uh, we took it to the United Nations uh, UNESCO International Conference. It was greeted very well. And today, I'm happy to say that a concept which has started in India, in a small school in Hyderabad, taken by C, it's being used by numerous groups all over the world of how you take uh, positive action by students. Now, as all of you know, the direction of development was also something which we were all struggling with. And in 2015, the United Nations came up with the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Now, SDGs gives you targets and goals very clearly as to what you need to, what you need to do. So we felt, how can we take this to the students? How can we take it to university students and bring these concepts together? So we formed a program, which I hope we will do it at Nilebe at Navarachana at some stage. We brought a program together of, of combining SDGs and the handprint concept into a lab, which students participate in, and they use their education in a, in a demarcated area of the ge geography of the village or the city to actually implement ideas. Now, I think that concept of getting people to actually change, to do things, is very important. We had a national program called Pariyavan Mitra, and my colleague was just telling me that one of our students, for instance, uh, from a village in Gujarat, felt that uh, there needs to be change at the panchayat. And at that time, there were no panchayat elections in his, in his village. They used to always dominate. So he got them to have an election, and lo and behold, this young man becomes elected. One of our students become elected as the, as, as the panchayat head. And as a sarpanch, then he converts so much of his knowledge, especially in water, something which is very close to Nanwizar, water and water conservation into that village and, and, and actually shows what you can do. We have, we have uh, a major program with uh, United Nations Environment Program called the Plastic Tide Turner. And many of you in Baroda, in Vadodara, have participated in this program. We have wonderful student reports from Vadodara of people who have participated in this, but the whole idea was, how can we decrease the single-use plastic 
from being disposed in ways in which it absolutely jams our, our, our riverways, it, it has a disastrous effect on the oceans, it is not recyclable, and what do you do? And I think here is a campaign. So these things can't only be solved through national level leadership. The prime minister has been very clear, and uh, Narendra Bhai has been very clear that our lifestyles have to change. If our lifestyles don't change, we will not be able to, to, to have this environment revolution. And lifestyles can't be changed through a parliament, act of parliament. They change through education. And therefore, to again have the opportunity of speaking today at an educational institution is great because that's where the change will happen. And Nanubai's belief in young people, in changing young people, what they did was, was really uh, quite, quite remarkable. We had a program called Gram Shilpi, and the Gram Shilpi was taking students who were going to the Gandhi and uh, Vidyapits, or, or uh, Gujarat Vidyapit, an institution like that, and giving them a two-year grant to go to a village and be a change agent. And surprisingly, or otherwise, we found that so many of them continue to be there, making, bringing in new technology, bringing in change through technological innovations. And again, a subject very close to him, which was, in fact, technological innovations. And how do students really look at something and do it? One of our early projects, I remember Tanubay discussing this with him also, was about the Nirdum Chulas. Nirdum Chulas were supposed to snake, take smoke away from your uh, from your hut and smoke as you know is a major indoor air pollution effect so a new chula had been developed and in this uh, chula uh, we found that people were not using it so we went there to understand what was wrong with this r and d program and the problem problem was that they said that all the heat was being directed to the center of the rotula while as they like it crisp on the side so they had made holes in the Nirdum Chula so that it would do that. And in the, in the process, completely destroyed their design and made it even less efficient than the normal one. Now, we were discussing this to say how an R&D institution can't be an ivory tower institution. You can't have men who have never made a rotlo designing a chula for women who, who want to make a badrino rotlo. You know, you have, to have, you have to have seen it. You have to be there. You have to feel with people. And that was, I think, Rahul's point about the hands-on part of his 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 whole whole approach. That he was he was not he was no ivory tower uh, uh, scholar in that sense. He was a person who who mixed with people. He talked to students. He talked to workers. He talked to others, inspiring them and getting the best out. So so the thing is that in today's time, when when really the problems are. Are, are manifold. I think the young people do need to take a stand. We need at times to sometimes even differ with authorities, as he did, not being afraid, knowing that it was not through any political or malice. It was because what he felt was correct. And those same governments, same people who were who initially might have opposed him in that, came around to say how well you have done that. Because of the conviction that he was doing it, purely from the point of view of what is good for either the state or the nation or the world. And that's how we, we, he approached the problem and, and took it forward. So today we look upon uh, the life of Nanubai as, as a way of taking some inspiration uh, from that. What it constitutes a leader, it's not so easy. What, it ha what does courage mean in this? What does what does what does plain speaking mean? What does how do you how do you bring science into what you say, and how do you take forward so that our problems of environment and sustainability we can overcome? So thank you very much, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share some ideas, some thoughts about Nanubai. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We thank you for a very insightful presentation. We are grateful for the time and efforts you took to share your thoughts and experiences with the Navrachna fraternity. I'm sure the audience would have a number of questions. 
We invite questions from the house, and I request Dr. Sandeep Patil, Associate Professor, School of Science, to please coordinate. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, sir, for an illuminating talk. And it was really a pleasure uh, to experience uh, the journey of Sri Nanubhai Amin as well as yours and uh, the efforts uh, that you made in the field of environment. I have the first question from Ms. Rupa Patel. She asks, doing what needs to be done to cl combat climate change, does it all come to a political will? The political will, of course, has to be there. And as I said, um, it was very disappointing internationally when the US withdrew from the 2015 Paris Agreement. And one would think that, do we write off America, which after all is the largest uh, economy in the, in, the, in, the, in the world? But the point was, it is not only the political will. America has done remarkably because every many of their states have done remarkably well. Many of their corporations have done remarkably well. Many of their universities have done remarkably well. So it is not to say that it is all centralized in one political will. It is your will, Rupa, and my will, which will which also makes a difference. Do I do everything I can within our half? Can we? Can we change a little bit? And climate change is certain things which has many, many impacts, many ways in which it is dealt with. It is every time I take a decision to transport, every time I decision, decision whether I, I use a public transport, do I walk, do I cycle, do I, do I buy a diesel vehicle, every one of those decisions have got something to do with climate change. If I plant a tree and I green and I do more sequestering, that has got to do with climate change. If I waste electricity, uh, that has got to do with it. And, 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 and please remember, it is so much in our culture, much of savings and recycling is really in our culture. Some months ago, I remember I left the lights on and I was, just, I was just going down to the office and the lady who works here, she's not literate, so she tells me, she doesn't switch it off, she tells me when I reach downstairs, she said, Saib, apne light chalu rak buli ya, nahi, <laughs> So, so I, I, I go up and I switch it off. Now, now see that, 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 that is part of our, our history. It's part of our parampara to, to understand that we don't waste, we don't throw away things. And, and they'll still be there. Uh, this is this is what it is. So how do we build on this? And each one of us can do it. So political will, I will say yes, of course. But political will and our will, each one of our wills is what is important. Thank you. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thanks, sir. Uh, so there's another interesting question from Dr. Darshi Bakshi, uh, faculty at Naurashna University. Uh, uh, according to her, solar energy and other non-conventional sources of energy are being extensively used in the residential purposes also and more so in industry. Will, they, will this help in mitigating the uh, challenge of climate change? Of course. I mean, solar energy is a, a great future for us, along with several others, like wind energy, perhaps as, as was mentioned earlier, tidal energy with Nanubi was looking at, and others. But solar energy, has a great potential and what is the experiment which was done in Gandhinagar, for instance, which was the rooftop solars and selling it back to the grid is, is something which really needs to now go uh, throughout the state. Nanubai's own interest in this area and we have worked with GEDA in the past uh, uh, and, and also more recently uh, working on making people more aware of what is already available. I always also like to say that sometimes when we think of solar energy, we only think of a PV cell uh, and then how we bring energy here. We don't think of all the chilies, for instance, which are dried 
on on a piece of cloth outside uh, through what i call sida solar because it is it is under the sunlight that we dry it or we we do it we we don't use it so solar energy in our country does not only mean this it can also mean keeping a window in a school at the right place so that you have more light and you you burn less uh, i remember one of our projects in australia where we were working with students and at the end of the project the only solar energy thing which they did was to make a new window in the right direction put a glass on it so that they needed to use less light electric light so i think we can be very creative in in what we do and come up with solution but solar energy of course is a very important part of it so there is another interesting question from madam subhlakshmi amin uh, according to her on on an organizational level whether it is a small or medium enterprise or a large corporation or a university how can people be involved regarding conservation meaningful converse, conservation efforts i uh, always feel that in an institutional setting whether it is an msme or your more so university or a school forming some sort of a group which provides the discussion forum and the leadership to make that institution more sustainable is a very important part they would meet and they would go through everything uh, they can go through how much electricity you do do you need to change lights to an led or how much water you consume or how much uh, how much greenery you have or how is your waste managed and i think i'm making a plan plan of action for that industry or this is very important in the case of industry it also is to do with the whole supply chain because sometimes you might find that you are doing nothing wrong but the your supply chain is such that it is uh, it is really causing major major environmental damage so if you take industry now uh, there is a very much a cradle to cradle type of approach the whole concept of uh, extended producers responsibility Uh, is is also very much there it's some some place to become low and when i give some suppose i i sell my things in a packaging which cannot be recycled or i sell it in a way which can be um, in many cases uh, uh, in in maharashtra and pune for instance all the all the all the uh, tetra packs are collected back because there is a small price to it and the school takes it back and does it small small things so i would suggest that the way an institution takes it forward is to for first form a group like ours and others and we work together in finding their solutions you are muted i think uh thank you sir uh, there is another interesting problem that uh, madam mala rishi has highlighted and she has a question pertaining to that uh, aggression or the advent of information technology is creating new sorts of problem with respect to recycling whether it is the mobile phones or the laptops or the batteries so how do we address that um you see any new technology or new invention will have both opportunities and challenge and i think the the whole it revolution has enabled us in even covid times to be all together just now for this hour uh, talking about this talk without my even setting foot in the vehicle and coming there although i would have preferred to uh, be there and have a cup of coffee with you maybe afterwards but i think uh, but for that it is possible to do this type of uh, conversation it is possible for for students uh i was two days ago talking about about gandhi ji and i wanted to refer to something he wrote many years ago and i could go to the gandhi heritage portal on my phone and see exactly the page number and exactly read it now that earlier would have meant me to go to a very good library and be able to do it so it has got all those things but with it comes all the negatives one of them is this uh, electronic waste now electronic waste there are ways in which you can uh, recycle electronic products you separate them and others but how do you do it so what we have done at ce is set up a little booth there where we collect 
everyone's electronic waste and then one of the recyclers picks it up takes it and then then they further process it <laughs> so i think uh, one problem is that we need to do that the second is of course the responsibility of the of the designer every time they make a new phone they change the way the char the charger for instance pin is changed so i can't use the previous one i have or there's some there are some innovations which i think you could standardize to to reduce waste so i think it's a joint problem but at the individual level i think you can certainly give it to recyclers and india having kabadiwalas and others besides the new recyclers has a potential of doing this much more easily than elsewhere okay thank you sir hope uh, that answers uh, her question so there's another interesting question from professor pratish shankar is the dean of uh, the school of environment design and architecture at navrashna university uh, according to him the board a uh, city of vadodara uh, and the institutions were always at the forefront as far as environmental issues are concerned does the city and its institution uh, Uh, or do these institution uh, at in the present scenario are capable of playing a major role city as well as the institution uh, i think vadodara uh, is first of all its name suggests is named after a tree so that itself is a is, is a fantastic you don't have to tell people that it's an environmental name it is it is a it is a it's a name after after trees but um, i think the role of civil so civic society civil society is very important vadodara has such a long history of institutions which have participated in it you also have the ms university you have many other institutions uh, which have been many of them of course nanu we have been himself has been connected with in many institutions there but he where he is not also he is he is partnered them and worked with them and i i think that they have a very critical role now having said that we don't have adequate forums where we can meet and do things between us and the government and in in my talk i did mention a number of places where nanubai bridge that gap between civil society and government and he could he could put those two together but many of us can't really do that to the extent we want and i have been arguing that we do need to do that and it would be wonderful in baroda to actually put something uh, together uh, to to do a certain forum where we can have a much more closer interaction with the planners of baroda with the, with the, with the city because it is it is it is the size of a city it's still a city which which can become almost a model city and as your as the as mr pradush was asking saying it can be at the forefront of what a real green city means and i think vadodara should do that okay thank you sir sir before proceeding further uh, uh, to be honest there are too many questions that are uh, in the chat box how many more we can take sir already yes. i have seven eight questions more in the pipeline yes, you ask ask the organizers but maybe uh, one or two more questions maybe uh, yeah then rest of the questions i think we'll try to divert to you later on by email sure is that fine uh, nilay sir yeah that's fine yeah uh, <laughs> sir uh, there is another interesting question uh, by madam shwetal bhart and it is regarding sensitizing children as well as adult regarding nature and according to her how do we ensure that especially when the uh, the children have lost uh, connect with the nature the natural habitat as well as the birds etc uh, owing to the lifestyle that we have at present so um uh it's it's a nice question and in fact there are uh, there are programs which which talk about uh, connect to nature i just lean down because i just brought out a book called uh, observing nature in a urban forest which is what i observed just around me during the during this lockdown and and this photograph is of a tree just 5 feet away from where i'm sitting just outside my window where which where the parrots first nested and the whole story is given in the book but how much you can actually observe there was a joke where this parent tells the child that look i think we should observe nature much more and the child asks what's the name of that app 
Uh, so, so I think people are forgetting it. And I think um, uh, we need to go out much more. This was, again, something very dear to Nanubai. Uh, to to go out into nature. As I said, he didn't only like meetings in big offices, but I remember, as I, as I said in my talk, going out into wilderness areas and, and sitting there and actually experiencing uh, nature. I think it's not a question of seeing a, seeing only big animals. Even spending one night uh, in the in the wilderness, say, in Piloton Island, is just observing the sky, night sky itself gives you that feeling. So we do need to take people and connect them back. I think parents also have a major responsibility. I think you can't just tell it to the children. I think parents spending a weekend, tomorrow is a Sunday, take, take children out, go out, spend at least two hours somewhere, even observe one single tree, even that's good. So I think um, it is all our collective responsibility. You can't say why the child is not doing it if the parents are not doing it. I think we have to, we have to reconnect, critical. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so there's a, Another question uh, from a YouTube participant, Ms. Monica Mehta. Uh, she has raised a concern regarding solar panels. She says that solar panels take up a lot of space and it affects the habitat and it also uh, can affect the flora and fauna. How do we tackle that problem while tackling the problem of environmental pollution? Well, which is why people have, uh, it's what she says is true that unless like anything, if you run to go into the details, it can be quite uh, destructive. The house, household solar panels, where you already have an urban structure and you have roof, surely cannot. As all of you know, uh, the prime minister, when he was chief minister, did this experiment on a canal. And as you enter Baroda from the highway, you, you pass by that canal where you see the solar panels on top of the canal. Now, his whole idea was that if I can... If I can line the, if I can put the solar powers on the canal, then well, firstly the amount of evaporation goes down, and secondly that I'm not using up extra space. Uh, the issue of what you do for birds and others, what is the distance you keep, these are the technical issues which one has to do. But I think her concern is uh, is correct, and I think but there are solutions, and there are solutions in Baroda also of what we can really do for this. Okay, so uh, can we take one final question? One final one, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is again from a YouTube participant and architect, uh, Shri Kintan Shah. He asked that how do we achieve the sustainable development goals, especially when we have to keep the planetary boundaries in mind? Uh, so how do we ensure the sustainable development goals? Well, sustainable and ensure development goals, yeah, the SDGs, are, are, are really minimalistic goals. They are not sort of aspirational targets. They are really, what is the very basic we need to do? And I think instead of all of us thinking only globally what we can do, what I mentioned was that through our SDG handprint lab, we ask people to look at the goals in a limited space. It could be your neighborhood, it could be your society, or it could be even as large as Baroda itself. And if we have to apply SDGs to Baroda, what are the things we need to do? What is uh, What do we need to do with energy? What do we need to do with transport? There are certain sectors which are big. And SDGs, by the way, it's not only environment in a limited sense. It also talks about, for instance, accidents. What do we need to do about, about accidents? What do we need to do about maternal mortality? How can we have an India of 2020 where not everyone goes to school? How can we have... Uh, a situation today where people don't have enough food to eat. Uh, so there are many, many issues here. And my suggestion here is that SDGs have come about through a long process of discussion. We and CE and I was very much part of that process of, of India negotiating in um, at the UN. We were supplying data from Indian ministries to our, our foreign office there. But the SDGs don't take them as, as sort of perfect examples. They are, they are not. But they are a good start to build up a discussion. So I think we should make local plans. And as I said, it was wonderful with Nanubai to make this plan for Gujarat. 
and and in many ways it is it is still valid because a whole lot of those things from that have not been done it was making a plan just to make a vision and i think if we collectively as as people from baroda if we have a vision of where do we want to take our city what would we like our city to be uh, when the uh, 10th nanobi i mean uh, memorial lecture is being given uh, what do we want what do you want that speaker at that time to say what has happened and i think if you can think of that way and say that in 10 years we would like to do these things you will be surprised we can actually do it but it requires a will and it requires leadership which is why the title of this talk that leadership in environment and sustainability it requires that leadership it requires leadership in a decentralized way through a number of people and educational institutions play a key role but so do industry Uh, so to government and uh, it is this is a combined leadership and having a way in which uh, people can work together share things that we will go forward thank you okay uh, thanks a lot sir it was very kind of you the uh, question and answers session got stretched a bit uh, we are thankful to our participants also for their overwhelming response and uh, hope they will excuse us for missing out some of the questions due to paucity of time uh, moving forward uh, on the occasion of the 101st birth anniversary of shri nanubai amin navrashna university has an important announcement to make i request uh, the permission of shri rahul amin president navrashna university to declare the navrashna university uh, shri nanubai amin science and environment debate open rahul amin sir thank you rahul sir uh, for the benefit of our audience uh, navrashna university has organized this uh, debate which has been declared open by our president shri rahul bhai amin uh, this is uh, an science and environment debate which is open to participants of class 9 to 12 as well as undergraduate students in universities I now request uh, uh, Dr. Vandana Talegaukar, Associate Professor, School of Liberal Studies and Education, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep Patil. It is my honor to propose a formal vote of thanks at the conclusion of the first Sri Nanubai Amin Memorial Lecture Series. I begin with expressing sincere thanks to Shri Kartikeya Sarabhai for accepting the invitation to deliver the talk. Your talk has given a befitting start to the lecture series. I acknowledge the gracious presence of Shri Rahul Amin, President Navrachana University, and the guidance given by Shrimati Tejal Amin, Chairperson Navrachana Education Society. it will be appropriate to mention here that shri nanubhai amin memorial lecture series has been conceptualized by dr nilay yagnik provost navrashna university thank you sir for creating this platform i appreciate the presence of members of board of governors board of management academic council academic advisory boards of navrashna university who are with us today at this lecture series my sincere thanks to all the attendees for being with us thank you one and all and have a pleasant evening thank you thank you nilay uh, sir nilay sir. Uh, sir yes sandeep uh, if i sign off uh, there is one more announcement 
uh, that uh, sejal madam would like to make oh please please uh, and after that we close the, yeah oh yeah yeah madam no no i just wanted if kartike bhai is still there i'm here i'm here yeah, yes kartike bhai your book uh, you know uh, nature in urban an urban forest uh, sounds very very uh, you know very interesting and i think when we are talking of education and molding young minds creating that perspective we would like to use this book in our uh, school maybe middle school or high school curriculum as supplementary reading so i will get in touch with you for that it's also on amazon so also okay also so we have to talk to your publishers directly because we will require large quantities yes yes please yes huh? very nice yes. thank you yeah. we we'll talk about it no this is important we have to get our students uh, we have to get our young people to see what is around thank you it will be very nice yes thank you so thank you all i okay. think we can we can thank leave. you thank you kartike bhai thank you so much kartike bhai for that very enlightening talk